Welcome back. This is Matt from Jaggers Brewing Co. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about today's project. That being American Wheat Ale in the series that it's a million degrees outside. Um, today it looks like it's actually fixing to rain. Tried to get all the chores done a little early today so I could film. Uh, but you know how that works. Life just gets in the way sometimes. So this is the American wheat ale again has been the last couple uh, videos and episodes uh, outside and inside temperature are drastically different and there's a lot of condensation on the glass here um, to note before we dig into this beer uh, just some real quick announcements we started a podcast for Jaggers Brewing Co you can find it here releases once a month um, it's just an experiment for me to try a different platform format of content uh see where it goes and uh take it easy uh not brew anything but to still talk about some beer uh additionally we launched a another channel uh called for mentors so be sure to check that out if you haven't taken a chance or you haven't taken the opportunity yet to uh like subscribe follow share all those please do so now I uh, really appreciate all the encouragement and seeing all those subscribers and follower uh, numbers go up. It's really uh, an awesome deal to me and uh, I appreciate every one of you. So please be sure to uh, let me know kind of what you're thinking in the comments and, and all that. So uh, American Weed Ale. Uh, so again, this is one of those things I was trying to fill out some slots in the Master Homebrew Program. Um, this is category 1D uh, to the BJCP guidelines. So um, let's dig into it real quick and then we'll talk about how we got into got it. Uh, got here. Oh man, trying to beat this rain. I hope I do. So on the uh, nose, I definitely am picking up a little bit on that malt profile for sure. Uh, the, the hops and yeast profile seem to be subdued. Uh, I feel like I'm picking up on some of the wheat here. Seems kind of one dimensional with the aroma. Like I said, it's just kind of multi. It's not super sweet, not super in your face, just kind of there. Mouthfeel right there in the middle, nothing special. Uh, so as the uh, the flavor profile comes onto the tongue, so kind of starts off a little bit like a sharp wang tang to it uh, pick up on some some spiciness some herbalness some earthiness uh, I pick up a little bit on that multi uh, multiness on the background uh, nothing nothing super special to write home about um, it's pretty good has a nice little citrus uh and earthiness background i think coming from the hops and um, a little bit of that that yeast profile fairly clean um this is a just a lawnmower type beer there's nothing super special about it it doesn't uh doesn't really really pop or sizzle just a generic beer um, pretty good. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find some, uh, <laughs> some really big descriptors for it and I just, it's not there. Um, and I think that's part of the point of the style a little bit is it's supposed to be something a little bit more flavorful than say the, uh, 
the typical like blonde ale or light lager uh just something that's that's just a hair above almost nothingness with a little bit more pop a little bit more pizzazz but nothing like super in your face right um it does now that i said that it had a medium mouth feel i'm kind of going back and feeling it and uh I feel like it's probably a light to medium mouthfeel. So, how did we get here? What did we do uh, to get here to this kind of non-exciting beer, right? Uh, so, as is normal here lately, I've been submitting my brews into homebrew competitions. Uh, so, I do have one score sheet back already. It's pretty positive. Seems like it's already trending in the right direction. Uh, we scored a 37. Uh, in the MHP uh, program, I need a 38 to kind of advance and rank up. So I missed, I missed one slot by one point. Uh, no big deal there. This thing's in a couple other competitions coming up towards the end of the year. Uh, so we'll see how we progress there. But uh, real quick, so um with our water profile what we did was we uh went to beersmith and i dialed in on the yellow balanced profile uh got all that together uh and then we put that into the um the ro water that we used right so this is one of those cases actually where uh, i had taken my recipe and i had shown it to a couple different friends and it was suggested that I use lactic acid in the mash uh, because I didn't have enough uh, basically big dark grains to kind of bring down those the mash pH there and uh, kind of looking at the chemical ions and stuff uh, there just wasn't enough there to bring down that mass uh, mash pH so we used 4.50 milliliters of lactic acid into the mash as well with with our water salts um, our recipe revolved around 47.5% uh, pale malt to row and then 47.5% of some uh, white wheat and then uh, the rest of it was rounded out with some Munich 1 at 5%. Uh, for the hops what we ended up doing was we used 24.5 IBUs of Willamette at 60 uh, then you know uh, as is the normal uh, here lately we've chilled the wart we used a warflock tablet at the 15 minute mark uh, yeast nu nutrients at the 10 minute mark and then I ended up throwing in uh, about a half an ounce of cluster um, and a half an ounce of saws at uh flame off or flame out uh for technically zero ibus i mean i'm sure there's something that it was contributed there uh but kind of low to next to nothing right and i'm pretty sure it's fixing the rain here so let me try to wrap this up uh so for our yeast what we did was we used some omega Double O, uh, double zero for West Coast Ale, and I will have the fermentation schedule in the description as well with the recipe. But uh, basically, we pitched it at um, 58 degrees. I let it free rise to 64. Held it at 64 for two days. Held it at 66 for two days. Uh, held it at 68 for two days and then let it free rise to 70 and held it there until fermentation was complete um, Like I said, this is one of those beers. It's just kind of Nothing super special um, It's clean to drink. I, I wouldn't even say that it's necessarily fun. It's just beer at this point point. I've shared this with some family and friends. Uh, they were really happy with it. They, uh, quite a few of them said I would drink uh, a few of these every day. One person said I would drink 
this all day long every day uh, so that's kind of cool to get that feedback from the people that you know um, I was kind of pretty disappointed in this one when I went to go keg it um, it was kind of bland to me uh, wasn't poppy or anything like that I think I will be playing with this recipe a little bit in the future uh, just to kind of get a little bit more character out of it uh, like I said I feel like it's kind of bland but um, thanks for joining me and putting up with this. Uh, be sure to kind of follow along and uh, once the circuit is over here in the Lone Star and I'm done with competitions for the year, we'll do a rewrap and wrap everything up there. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed guys, we get some good feedback, some good scores back and are able to advance, maybe even get some hardware. But um, be sure to follow the other channel be on the lookout for the next release on the podcast episode and follow like share comments let me know what you think about this recipe if there was anything that i could have done different until next time guys thank you so much cheers y'all Hey, so uh, just real quick, I know I was in a big rush to try to beat the rain, and unfortunately, uh, due to that, I kind of forgot about some stuff that I wanted to talk about uh, that were here on the notes. Uh, I glanced over it. Unfortunately, like I said, you know, I, I had it in my head like to hurry up and beat the rain. As you can see, it, it downpoured. I barely made it, it got everything inside all the equipment and everything uh, so now that things have kind of settled down for the evening I can uh, talk about some of this other stuff uh, so basically one of the things that I wanted to talk about was that I had originally missed my OG uh, for the uh, the brew day right and so um, I missed it by 0 .003. I ended up with uh, 1.50, or I'm sorry, 1.050, um, and then it ended up fermenting a lot lower than uh, the estimated uh, fermentation was, and so the target uh, fermentation was 1.012. I ended up with a 1.004, uh, so we got a little lower uh, attenuation there. So for the estimated ABV, it was supposed to be 5.38. Um, I actually got 6.04, so that kind of makes sense a little bit with it not really being um, so much, I guess, in line and in style, right? Uh, which still is amazing that it scored a 37 on the one competition, but it is what it is, right? At that point, um, I'm, I'm not going to beat it up, and hopefully, honestly, it continues to perform pretty well on the last couple uh, competitions in the circuit. So uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to, you know, basically bring uh, attention to on, on that. Um, so the other one was well i i talked about the fermentation uh schedule so that'll be there in the the description so um other than that uh, that's pretty much it um the the lower uh attenuation and, and higher abv kind of was a little odd uh you know missing my gravity it is what it is uh you know if if i'm three points off or five points off i'm not i don't really worry about it so much uh the lower attenuation is kind of something that i wasn't expecting don't really know what happened with that um you know i don't know uh maybe i pitched some some really good yeast or uh, you know i obviously had a very fermentable wart 
uh, maybe next time I need to kind of maybe mash a little bit higher, maybe make some more unfermentable sugars or something of that nature. Um, you know, there's there's some diagnostics that needs to happen there uh, to, to find out what happened. Um, you know, maybe I just got a really active deal or maybe there was a little bit of maybe some wild yeast that got in there somehow. I've been pretty like uh, on like sanitation and stuff, especially, you know, using the, the new conical fermenter and, uh, you know, chilling the wart down in time and getting a good active pitch going quickly and stuff to try to beat all that out. But sometimes that stuff happens, you know, not a whole lot that we can do about it. But, um, you know, I know I already signed off originally <laughs> before trying to beat the rain. But uh, thank you for sticking around uh, and kind of watching these the special notes. Uh, one other thing to note, though, uh, so for the name of the beer, American Trish, uh, I thought it was kind of funny uh, when, we, uh, when, when I was trying to fill out a, a competition form. Uh, it was the first entry in for the year for that beer, and uh, I was everybody was out in the living room and I was at the PC and I was like quick guys I need a name for this American beer uh, I'm thinking American something and uh, my son in his <laughs> uh, funny sometimes hillbilly talk uh, he said treesh and so uh, I tried to spell it as best as I could the way that he said it I thought it was pretty hilarious but uh, you know Thanks again, guys. Uh, really appreciate everything, and uh, cheers. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.